Eh, it is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. After only a couple days. Thanks, Snake, she says. I should go write that down, then. You can read my poem now, okay? Alright, here's Bottles. Oh, wow, that first line's pretty fucked up. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the cat in front of my monitor. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on a shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle, in bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night, fuck. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow the dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. To them out my bottles that much. Frantically, I, I frantically pulled them from the shelf one after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Oh, that's not good. Holy crap, I say. Sayori, did you really write this? She says, of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? I say, yeah, but this is really fucked up. I mean, I didn't expect something <laughs> like this coming from you. So he says, Monica taught me the whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I say, I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. She says, creepy. I say, well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to be you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. She says, aw, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. I say, you've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. She says, yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. I laugh. Don't get ahead of yourself. So you always, always had a habit of getting obsessed with something. Before dropping it, no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, next, Natsuki. Hmm. Well, I can admit that, that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. I say, that's good. She says, come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh, you think so? She says, yeah, well, I guess if you've been with, friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. I say, sorry, it has a type all of a sudden? She says, well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy... Spend so much time with someone like you. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Oh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably be, she'd probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say that we each take care of each other in our own way. She says, whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh, yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Cat, please. She has, Natsuki has the best writing out of anyone. Because it's really easy to fucking see. Okay. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. And that's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing at my... I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words, but she likes spiders, and that's why I'm not friends with her. 
One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She liked spiders, so her hands were probably gross. Are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. If it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Huh. Not bad, right? She says. I say, it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. And a lot darker. She says, yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. This isn't even my final poem. I hope you don't I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. I say no, of course not. She continues, anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. I actually really like her poems. Like anyone would agree with the subject of this poem. Anyone let me try this again. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. I reply, do you know people like that? She says, of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... Ah, she says, that doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you for... Fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. You're right, Natsuki. People are stupid. Who cares that what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and that makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. I reply, ha, huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about the same about something similar today. Oh, that's interesting. I actually got to someone else's poem is actually kind of interacting with someone else's poem. That's neat. Natsuki says, did you say Yuri? I say, yeah. She said her poem is about an unusual... Oh, never mind. She said her poem is about an unusual hobby of hers. Oh, did I just lose volume? Ah, oh, cat. Cat. Come, come on. That was my volume. I think my volume just went down. It doesn't really matter. Cat, please. Please, cat. I love you, but you need to stop. I continue. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. She says, really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I can't stop making fun of her. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words because she has been judging her. She realizes they're actually pretty similar after all. She says, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird, be weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. R really? Oh, fine. I, I reply, well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. Natsuki says, it's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. On to Monica. Oh, yeah. That is funny that you're talking about spiders, Abyssal. Monica says, Hi again, Snake. How's the writing going? I say, All right, I guess. Monica says, I'll take that. As long as it's not going to be bad. Oh, fuck. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. I laugh. I wouldn't count on that. She says, You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? I say, Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. She says, "All right, this one's good. It feels like you're not. Uh, it feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read." Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? 
I say, hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally, she says. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I said, I reply, I noticed that too. When she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. She says, mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. She says, trust me, I tried. Have you tried chocolate and just shoving it in her mouth? Who knows what goes on on that head of hers? I say, I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. She says, no, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. I say, hey? You completely misunderstood. She, said, she laughs. Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she already got a boyfriend. I say, wait, really? She says, yeah, fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... I say, well, there's not really anything wrong with that. She says, oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway... You want to read my poem now? I like the way this turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me! The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me? Did she forget to finish? That's weird. An endless poem of meaningless... Load me. Hmm, I say. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? I actually... Can I go back to that? Oh, I can't go back to her poem. Okay. I actually like the sine, cosine, tangent. That was actually rather clever. It's even more abstract than the last one, huh? She laughs. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. I say, no, I never said that. It's just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. She says, I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. That's true. It's almost like magic. They've mentioned magic several times now. Monica says, the way I wrote the lines are really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see, I say. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. She laughs. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. <sighs> you never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Ha 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 ha. That's my advice for today. That was really fucked up. I'm kind of afraid now. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. I think I broke the fourth wall, but I don't know what that is. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room... Natsuki says, is it about the festival and how our club doesn't make sense? She says, well, sort of. Natsuki replies, ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll end up just embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. Yuri says, that's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Monica says, don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't, we won't need much more than a few decorations. Sorry has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during the event. Natsuki says, okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Monica replies, ah, sorry. I thought you had heard about it already. We're going to be performing! Live on stage! Natsuki says, performing. Yuri says, P. Ah, uh, Monica. 
Monica says, yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a... Oh, man. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems, too. Sayori's putting on, putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Sayori giggles. Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Natsuki says, Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Monica says, Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Natsuki says, Well, no, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Yuri says, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, says Sayori. No, Sayori, says Monica. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. Natsuki's grumpled. Grumpy? Grumpled. Yes, grumpled. But, Monica says, I still think we should give it our best. We're gonna do it anyway, fuck you. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If, if we start the event and we each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. But I'm calling that it's gonna fail because there are no other fucking main characters on the front of this goddamn game. Anyway. Yeah, says Sayori. It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. Monica says, that's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? Monica says, I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is staying in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree, I say. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monika have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Natsuki says, well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get this over... Ah, I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Sayori says, alright. Monika says, phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Sigh, she says. I guess I don't really have a choice. Sorry, laughs. That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. Yuri says, this club is seriously going to be the death of me. Monica says, oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. Probably. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. Natsuki says, no, 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 no way. Yuri says, Monica, this is too sudden. Monica says, well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Yuri says, oh, no. Monica says, don't worry. I'll start off with every... I'll, I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Is there voice acting in this game? Sorry, says, can I go next? Monica laughs, of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. <laughs> Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. Sayori says that. That was so good, Monica. She laughs. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Yuri, I'll go next. So Yuri says, Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches out a sheet of paper be between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. Yuri says, this poem is called... 
She anxiously glances at each of us. Sari says, you can do it, Yuri. Yuri says, it's, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practi practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem, poem is a full of twists and turns and structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse of the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she even, <laughs> as if she bewildered even herself. Zavin, you're totally right. That would be a really cool anime. It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, Monica says, Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Sari says, okay. Guess I'm next then. Sari hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. I'm betting we'll be last, actually. This one's called My Meadow. She laughs. Sorry, I giggled. She laughs again. I say Sayori. She says, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Monica replies, try not to think of think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. She says, I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery as so like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. What? What's happening in chat? I have to name... Yeah, at least... <laughs> oh, wait, what are you talking about, Fickle? What the fuck? Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna ignore chat for a few minutes. Uh, maybe this is what Sayori meant when it, when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone... Sorry, let me <laughs> reread that. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone... I guess I read that right. I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. Sayori says, I did it. I reply, good job, Sayori. She laughs. Even Snake liked it, and he's an asshole. I mean, I guess that's a good sign. I reply, what does that even mean? Monica says, it came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Sayori says, I don't really understand. Monica replies, in other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Sayori says, oh, I know what you mean. Uh, that's, well, I've been practicing this kind of thing, that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. She laughs. Monica says, then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? She says, okay. Monica says, now, who's next? Natsuki? She grumbles. Don't make me go before Snake. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. <laughs> Might as well let Snake lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. That's great. Sayori says, Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine, I say. I might as well get it over with. Honestly, going first, best. First or second, it's fucking best. I wish I had learned that earlier in life. I say, but it's not like I have that much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. All these women. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly competent in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. 
Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Participation award. I say, sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Monica says, don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. I say, yeah, maybe. She says, all right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Natsuki says, yeah, yeah, I'm going. She begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why? Why are you all looking at me? That's... Hmm. Monica says, because you're presenting. Natsuki says, hmm, how dare I? Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she, once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude appear, disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. Monica says, that wasn't so bad, was it? And, yeah, Abyssal, I'm with you. I don't know what you guys are talking about. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say, Natsuki says. You better, ma you better not make me do that again, despite the fact that we're going to make you do that again, and that's the deal. Monica says, ah, well. Do you at least feel, a little, feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? She says, I'm doing... I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends... It's just embarrassing. Sorry says, that's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Natsuki says, well, that's just how it is, so... Monica replies, well, I guess in that case... You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. Might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Holy shit, we've been doing this for two and a half hours. Uh... Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so blah, 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 blah. so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I say. I should probably find something, of, some other poem to recite instead. When I, Monica says, that's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. I say, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. Sairi says, I can't wait. Yuri says, I can do this. I can do this. I say, all right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do... That's a weird sentence. Hmm. Then I'll have to do my best. I say, ready to go, Sayori? She says, yep. Natsuki says, look at you two, always going home together like that. Monica says, it's kind of adorable, isn't it? Sayori giggles. I say, jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Yuri says, it must be a little nice, though. I say, well... Ah, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? Sorry, says, it's okay, Snake, you don't have to say it. I say, whatever, let's go already. <laughs> oh my god, Abyssal, that's amazing. It fi uh, fi Abyssal and Fickle, good good play play off each other there the whole imagine everyone naked makes it easier makes no sense says abyssal and fickle replied it makes it harder that's <laughs> uh, I walk home with Sayori once more even though it's only been a few days a lot of things have already changed like I forgot to do homework for any other class because all I'm doing is paying attention to this fucking club but today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. She replies, sorry, I was spacing out. I say, ah, no wonder. She says, I was thinking about something from earlier. 
Like how we get to... I, I mean... So Yuri fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked you to, to walk home with you. I say, huh? Then I say, cat, I can't fucking see. Cat, cat. So he says, what would you do? I say, what kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. She giggles. Oh, shit. Time to save. I'm going to save every option. Uh... Hmm. So, I don't want to make Sayori... I, I don't think... Hmm. I think the nice thing to do would be to walk home with Sayori. Because Sayori's the only one a part of this conversation. So I'm not really on the spot. So even if I'm lying to her... I swear to God, Cat, if you step on the reset button on my computer. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say I walk home with her still. Say, Sayori. You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? She says, eh? But, but, she's so beautiful and smart. I say, geez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. She says, you're so silly, Snake. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it. So... Say, Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. She says, sorry. I say, besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? She says, hmm. The conversation trails off. Oh, Fickle's a Sayori man. I see how it is. It's kind of weird. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Uh, as with everything else about this game, in a lot of visual novels, you have to go through other routes first before you can get like the true route, the true ending. So even if my intentions are good, it might be that I'm on a bad route because I have to be. And also, a best of yes, all of them are actually Canadian. Still, we're going. We're trying for a possible Yuri route. Uh, let's see. Did... I think... S I think she likes horror. Yeah. Starscape. Fantasy's not one of them. Fuck! Waterfall wasn't one. Oh, no. I don't... I hope I don't have to get all of them. I'll have to look it up. Extraordinary. I think that's not a good one. I'm gonna try landscape. Yeah. Journey? I wonder if there are options in these that are none of the three. Hmm. Fulgent. The fuck does that mean? Hmm. Let's try whisper. Nope. Nope. Shit. Ah, well, I get more in Yuri's, so it's fine. Monica says, Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. I say, don't worry, I just walked in too. Yuri says, were you practicing piano again? She says, y Monica says, yeah. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Yuri says, you must, have, you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking a piano? Monica says, well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. Natsuki says, ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. 
She says, eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday? Well, yeah, says Natsuki. But I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school, we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. I say, you sound like a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Natsuki says, Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid, says Monica. That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Natsuki says, oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? What are you, a nerd? You of all people? Monica says, oh, I didn't, I didn't say I didn't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? What do you mean, you people? Uh, Natsuki says, because. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm trying to remember the Tropic Thunder line. Fuck, it's been t I need to watch that movie again. Natsuki says, it's right in your name. Mon Ika. Monica says, eh? That's not how you say my name at all. That's a joke that makes no sense in translation. Natsuki <laughs> uh, says, what? Monica says, ah, never mind. I'm the only one who knows I'm in a video game. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Natsuki giggles because that's all she's programmed to do. Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Yuri says, excuse me. I say, where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori's sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. She says, eh? You're spacing out again. She says, oh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. I say, huh? Is everything all right? She says, of course. Why wouldn't it be? Just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. She says, geez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori so shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. I say, well, all right. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at the usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers at her desk. Monica says, Snake, what's up? I say, hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Monica says, up? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? I say, maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems downcast today. Monica replies, you think so? I can't say that I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room with Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Monica says, maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised that I'm not the one asking you, Snake. But I'm surprised I'm not the one... Yeah, alright. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. I say, yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you know anything, so I'll drop it now. She says, no, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? They're gonna get me all that sick political power. Abyssal, you haven't seen Tropic Thunder? You should see, see Tropic Thunder. Monica, maybe I'll try talking to her myself. I say, are you sure about that? She seems like she wanted to be left alone. She says, are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing up with a person of interest. I say, person of interest? What do you mean by that? She's, Monica says, I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Snake. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Monica says, well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? I say, eh? She's been so much happier every day, uh, ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. I say, what? No way. Metal Gear... Uh, Sayori was always like that? She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it, uh, than it always has been. Monica giggles. You're so funny, Snake. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her... Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. Ah, I said too much, says Monica. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget what about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. I say, ah, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I wouldn't 
that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. And now Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much I do care about her. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? Glance around the room. Yuri. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So, I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit down, sit in one next to her own. So this means Natsuki is sitting by herself doing nothing. Just want to point that out. Yuri says, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. I say, relax, you didn't even do anything. Yuri says, but. I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. I say, alone with my thoughts, I think? How are you even to tell that I was think how are you even able to tell that I was thinking that? Well, says Yuri, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to get spot based on your posture and expression. And not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. I say in any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize, says Yuri. Your troubles are are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are those certainly who would find the most comfort in keeping them to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Say, ah, it's not really that big of a deal. I'm just feeling about uneasy about Sayori. Yuri says, Sayori? I say, yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something's happened to her. Oh, says Yuri. That's quite romantic. I say, eh? Sorry, didn't mean to say something stupid. I say, yeah, that was kind of stupid, but it's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see, she says. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. I say, or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. She says, snake. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. There are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter, how, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, I say. So you think there might be something behind it after all? Mmm, says Yuri. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too. Oh god, Abyssal, that'd be fucked up. If the game inputted what I said through the mic. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't stream. Oh, actually, you'd, you'd just turn off the mic in the game. It would actually be really easy. Here it continues, and I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? I say, well, I guess that was the case. She says, Sayori. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Can't a guy be concerned about a friend without wanting to fuck her? Like, come on. Come on, Yuri. I, I guess, I say. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri says, blank. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she were searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. She says, sometimes... A person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is, I think that. She would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. I say, Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. Also, I'm tr trying for you. I mean, what? I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm a pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. She says, that's not a compliment, is it? <laughs> I say it is what it is. To avoid making sense of what I just said. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, 
As long as you're okay with it. I say, yeah, I have more chocolate. I mean, what? I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Monica says, okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. Make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Okay. I think it is like 9.45. My voice is dying. I am not used to talking this... This much, this fast, for this extended period of duration. Like, it's, it's too much. I gotta stop. But, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um... I, this is a fun visual novel so far. It's interesting. It's obviously very cute, very simple, slice of life kind of thing. The poems are nice for the most part. Uh, there's some there's some fun twists. There's some good fourth wall humor here and there. Uh, so we'll continue. I want to see what happens. I don't know how long it's going to take for a shoe to drop. But I love, love all the subtle hints in... The, w the words that you're picking out. Whoa, cat, do not choose. Fuck. Okay, I'm gonna. Did I save? No, I didn't. Uh, love the subtlety. It's nice seeing the poems slowly get darker and darker and have some weird, vague uh, meanings to them. So it's kind of really unclear whether it's really fucked up or it's just appearing that way. So yeah, Fickle, I'm sorry. No, my voice, my throat is actually hurting at this point, so I, ha I have to stop. Uh, but we'll probably pick it up tomorrow or Thursday. So yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.